welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and I love to do videos on luxury fashion, handbags, shoes. I'd like to do some styling videos and I do those things from the perspective of somebody who is in the middle of her life as well as someone who is mid-sized. So if you think you might like that, I would love it if you would join us here and click the subscribe button down below. I would really, really appreciate it. We're inching ever so closer to a thousand subscribers and I I just I can't even believe I'm saying that honestly I mean you know we have like a hundred and something to go but like I just I'm beyond words so to everyone who has subscribed thank you so much I I just I cannot express the joy that I get from interacting with all of you and just having this outlet for me so thank you for being here so last week I did a tag video. Uh, I was tagged by Nick Snell from Living Loud with, with N NJS. I, I, he just changed his channel name and so I always forget exactly what it is, but it's Nick Snell. He's amazing. I will link his channel down below. And the tag was five brands that I will never buy from. In filming that video, I thought to myself, okay, so these are brands that I would never buy from, and I'm pretty sure I won't buy from those five brands that I mentioned, and actually there was a bonus six with Senrev. But it got me thinking, okay, well, what about the brands that I haven't bought from that I actually am really interested in buying from? And I had five of those that I could like come up with right off the top of my head. So I thought, well, let's, let's do the opposite of that tag video and let's do the five brands that I am interested in buying from. So I just realized that I came on camera with no earrings on, no rings on. My apologies, but you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna like <laughs> go get that stuff. I've just been working from home and left briefly to go look at an orthodontist, a potential orthodontist for my kids. So anyway, <laughs> You're getting what you're getting, I apologize. <laughs> but let's get into those five brands. So I have my notes here, and uh, if you haven't seen the video where I unboxed this Ulysses notebook cover from Hermes, I will link it above here, but I am very much enjoying using it. So the first brand, and this will probably come as no surprise to any of you who saw my wish list video, that brand is Loewe. Now, if you saw my first New York City, or no, my second, sorry, my second New York City shopping vlog, I'm trying to do those kind of regularly on a weekly basis, but if you saw my second one, you saw that I went to Loewe, and I have to admit, I've kind of become a little obsessed with Loewe. I think it's going to be a pretty big brand this year. I really think that they're having a moment this year. That's not really why I got into them. I've always been very interested in the puzzle bag for years, actually. So in that video where I unboxed, was it when, where, when I unboxed this? Yeah, when I unboxed this, I also unboxed a Loewe fragrance that I got at that same time when I was trying on bags. And I mentioned that I ran into Karen Britchick when I was there at the Loewe store, and I found Karen Britchick by searching on YouTube for puzzle bag reviews. And this was probably, oh my gosh, pre-pandemic. So maybe like 2019-ish, maybe even 2018. I, I can't remember, but I have always, always liked that bag. I just, I think it is really interesting looking yet completely understated. It is the epitome of the if you know, you know bag. And to be honest with you, this list is pretty much comprised with if you know, you know bags. So I thought that was kind of interesting as I was looking through. I was like, this all has kind of a general theme. But anyway, I love the puzzle I have for a long time. Now that they've come out with the mini, I'm really intrigued with that one. It's so cute and it does fit my phone. Like it fits all of my essentials. It kind of, it's still, I would say a little bit smaller than my Speedy 20, but still roomy enough that I can get, you know, my card holder, my key holder from Louis Vuitton, a lipstick, my phone, you know, anything I would need 
for really a daily basis. And it's just the perfect size to like walk around because it's crossbody. It's a great New York bag, but also interested in the small too. And then I tried on the hammock bag. Now, I will fully admit to you that when I've seen the hammock bag, so I've seen it a couple times at Saks, you know, when I've sort of been checking out the Loewe puzzle bags and also the basket bags, which I'm also obsessed with that elephant one. I almost pulled the trigger on that this summer. Uh, you may have seen that in my summer vlog that I did, but I, I never, it just, it, I didn't necessarily love it when I saw it sitting on the shelf. But when I was at the Loewe boutique, the SA brought it out and he's like, you know, give this a try. And wow, like I am now fully obsessed with this bag. <laughs> I originally tried it on in a compact size, which is the smaller size. And then I tried it on in the small. And honestly, I think I like the small better. It's not that much bigger than the compact, but it's just enough bigger that that folding that it does when you're carrying it like crossbody or when, well, actually not when you're carrying it crossbody, but when you're like squeezing the two handles together, it really just flops into that, that origami shape. And I mentioned in the unboxing video that I really, it really reminds me of the Mini Lindy. I, I realize it shape-wise, it's not exact. The Mini Lindy is much more squat and dumpling-like, but it's they both have that sort of origami feel to them where they, you know, you bring those two handles together and they, they squeeze together. And anyway, obsessed. Definitely one that I wanna to add to my collection. So that's been added to the wish list even though I've already done my wish list. I also really like their ready to wear and some of their sneakers. I did take a look at some of the sneakers while I was there. I love their sweaters. I think they do amazing sweaters. There's a denim jacket that I saw when I was in boutique. I think actually Isabel from Isabel Style just like unboxed, revealed that denim jacket. It's really cute. And yeah, I just, I like their vibe. I like that it is and if you know, you know kind of brand. And I think that what they do is very well done, handcrafted, just beautiful, beautiful leathers. And yeah, I'm pretty smitten with Loewe right now. The next brand on my list is Delvo. Now, not a lot of people I think know about Delvo. So it really takes that if you know, you know <laughs> statement to like the extreme because I don't think that many people know about this brand. Now there does happen to be a Delvo boutique in New York. I went into it in June when I was here and I fell in love with the lingo. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's L-I-N-G-O-T. And I'll, I, obviously I've been popping pictures up here on the side and I haven't mentioned that, but anyway, so it really, really reminds me of the Constance uh, without, you know, the obvious H buckle. I mean, obviously it wouldn't have an H, it's Delvo. But so it has like a D looking kind of, like an elongated D as the latch. But again, you don't, it really looks more sculptural than it does a logo or even a D. I, 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 hopefully you see that too, but I just think that it is gorgeous. I love the size of it. Unfortunately, when I was there, they like cannot keep this bag in stock, especially in that like Hermes gold kind of color. And yeah, if it comes back in stock, I could see adding that to my wish list or adding that to my collection because again, I just think it's a, just a very understated luxury. It is, I would say, rivals Hermes in quality. I mean, the stitching and, you know, the handcrafted details of this bag are just amazing. They also have a bag called the Brilliant. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Maybe in French it's like Brillant. I don't know. I don't speak French. But anyway, um, it is also a really, really pretty bag. Very gives you kind of Kelly vibes because it's got the single, you know, top handle and the flap and it's got a strap that you can, you know, wear shoulder or crossbody. It does come in several different sizes. I really, really like that bag. I love the one that Classics with a Cork has in her collection, the one that has like graffiti on it. I think that's super cool, very edgy and just, 
I, I just, I love that. So maybe if I could get my hands on that one, I could see adding that to my collection. But I think of all of the bags that Delvo sells right now, I really, really am intrigued by the lingo. So maybe that one, probably not this year, but hopefully in the future, it will be added to a wish list. Next, we're gonna discuss Celine. And I think that most people would agree that Celine is one of those, if you know, you know, especially from the Phoebe Philo days. Now, you know, let's, let's take the luggage bag out of the equation, because I think that was a pretty well-known Celine bag. You know, people thought it looked like a robot or whatever, which I would kind of agree. I've never really been into the luggage. I know people love their luggage totes, especially the mini one, which I think is the Nano. I don't know. I n I've never understood Celine sizing names. Like the micro is bigger than the so I, it's just, they don't make any sense to me. But regardless of what size it is, never been a big luggage tote fan, but I love, and this was on my wish list, the Sosangle that they don't, I believe, make anymore. I found it when I was like doing my research for my wish list, but I don't think if you go to the Celine website that you can find it, or at least not in, I don't think in the United States because I looked when I was at one of the Celine boutiques, they didn't have any on the shelves. So I, I, somebody correct me or let me know in the comments below, do they still actually make the Sosangle or do you have to buy it pre-loved? To be honest with you, Celine bags don't have the best resale value. So I would probably look to buy a Sosangle on the resale market, regardless of whether or not they were still making it new. I have been obsessed with this bag ever since I saw it on Emma Hill's channel, probably three years ago, I think now. I just think it is an amazingly beautiful, understated, like hobo bag. It's not, I don't know that I would say it's a hobo bag. It's sort of like a hobo bag meets a bucket bag. I think maybe it's more of a bucket bag, but I just, I just love it slung over the shoulder. I just, I love all the vibes about that. And I have had, I think I mentioned this, I have had like a, a notification or whatever on Vestier Collective for years. So like every time another new one gets posted to Vestier, I get a notification, an email notification that like a new one has come up and I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Uh, but, but I plan on it. I think this year is going to be the year that I add a so single to my collection, but I love, a lot of the other Celine bags too. I love the classic box that again was from the Phoebe Philo days. I like the new Triumph bag, which is kind of similar in vibes to the to the box bag, but it now has that new, you know, Triumph logo on it, which is I think a re like they brought back that logo. I think it used to be like the Celine logo and then now they've brought it back. And, you know, I still think even though it's a pretty big logo, I don't think many people know what it is. And so I like that bag. I like the new, the 16 bag, I think is great. Again, has like that top handle kind of gives Kelly-ish vibes. But yeah, I think Celine is really knocking it out of the park right now. I mean, I think they've always knocked it out of the park. I've loved the belt bag in the past. Again, I mean, I, I could go on and on about Celine bags. Am I super excited about the Phoebe Philo, you know, release? I think it's in June, June or July. Uh, yes, that will be highly anticipated by me. So I am very excited to see what she does as I'm sure many of you out there are as well. Going along sort of with Delvo, and again, a brand that I just don't think a lot of people know about is Moyna, spelled M-O-Y-N-A-T. And I believe that I am pronouncing it correctly. If I'm not, please correct me in the comments below, but I think it is Moyna. And they have a counter at Saks. So I have looked at their bags several times, but I really like a lot of their design. So they have something called the O Tote Rub. Ruban, Ruben, R-U-B-A-N, Ruban, I'm gonna say. And it comes in three sizes. It's a PM, an MM, and a GM. It is very, very similar 
to the Neverfull tote. It's a coated canvas, but I really like that it has like those stripes on it. It just has a little more pizzazz. It actually kind of gives me the, the Mon Mono from Louis Vuitton on like a Neverfull where you can, it has that like stripe and you can get your initials there or whatever. It's kind of what the uh, Moina totes remind me of but much, much better priced than the Louis Vuitton Neverfull is now. So the smallest size is like a little over $1,000 and the GM is $1,500. So I, it's, it's not like officially on my wish list, but I could see picking up like one of the GM totes. I think they're really pretty. They come in like some really nice colors and just as an option to the Neverfull. And please don't get me wrong. I love the Neverfull. I have a Neverfull MM in the Damier Azur, and I would love to get a Neverfull in the monogram in the GM size, just as like a great like work tote, even though I don't go to work outside of my bedroom. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh, that sounded horrible by the way. I'm pointing to my desk over there. My desk is in our bedroom. I don't work in the bedroom, okay? Get your mind out of the gutters. <laughs> anyway, that really sounded bad. But, you know, when I go on work trips, etc., I think it's a great weekender bag. Not that we really do like weekends away, but you know, you never know. So yeah, love that one. I also really like the Gabrielle Clutch. It is very reminiscent of the Kelly Pochette. And I think around the $4,000 mark, I don't know how much Kelly Pochette is. I'm guessing it's not $4,000. I'm guessing it's more, but I couldn't tell you that for sure. I also really like the Gabrielle bag. So there's the Gabrielle clutch and then just like the regular Gabrielle, which is very, again, similar to the Kelly. It's got the top handle with the strap. It comes in two sizes. It comes in a BB and an MM size which range in price from $3,900 to like $4,300. Definitely better priced than the Kelly. I mean, we're talking like half, less than half price from what you would pay for a Kelly. Even if you could just buy it retail in the store, not have any pre-spend. You know, if you were just one of those lucky people who walked it off the street and said, hey, do you have a Kelly 25, Cellier, and you know, Epsom leather? You do? Awesome, here's my whatever, 10,000 plus dollars. You can get a very similar style and looking bag for, like I said, less than half of what a Kelly would cost you. And then they have the Flory bag, I assume that's how you pronounce it, F-L-O-R-I, which to me, I know it's not really the exact shape, but if the Constance and the Pochette Matisse had a baby, it would be the Flory. Now I realize that the Flory is a little more rounded on the edges, it's not quite as square. Now, you know, the Constance isn't like completely square. It, it has rounded edges, but uh, it's not quite as rounded. It's almost like if the Constance and the Pochette Matisse and the Dior Bobby bag, there we go. <laughs> if they all had a baby, I'm not quite sure how three people or three things have a baby, but if you could, that's what this bag would be. Because <laughs> it's got the same kind of closure as the Pochette Matisse, but the the sort of size of it looks more like a Constance, but the bottom shape looks more like a bobby bag. Are, are you getting me here? Or am I people like, just like, what in the hell are you talking about? Anyway, I do think it's a really cute bag. Again, really great crossbody bag. And those run around $4,200. So last but not least in my list of the five brands that I am interested in buying this year or at any time is Bulgari or Bulgari. I don't know which way to say it. Again, somebody correct me in the comments below. I don't know which way is the correct like place to put the accent, but I'm going to say Bulgari. I think that's how I normally pronounce it. Anyway, I think their bags are stunning. I love the clasp on the Serpenti bags that like, you know, the serpent's head with the jeweled eyes. I just, I mean, obviously they're a jewelry brand, so they're hardware is like jewelry and jewelry quality. Like it's just beautiful. Now, I just said they're a jewelry company, right? So I know that there's, some people have issues or maybe not issues, but some people sort of take offense to brands that like are 
known for a certain thing, like in this case, jewelry, right? And fine, high-end jewelry, who then like decide to branch out into other things like handbags. You know, some people might say that about Jimmy Choo, right? Jimmy Choo, what do you think of when you think Jimmy Choo? You think shoe brand, right? Well, but you know, they've got the Bon Bon bag and they're, you know, dipping their toes in and Mina Mawadi's doing the same thing. You know, she was all about shoes and now she's bringing out bags. So I know that some people have issues with this, but I think that Bulgari does it extremely well. Now, again, is there resale value like up, you know, near Chanel, whatever? No, of course not. But not many brands have the best resale value. I mean, if you're not talking about Chanel, Louis Vuitton, or Hermes, there really aren't other brands that have as good of resale value. But I just think that their bags are stunning. I love the Serpenti top handle, which, you know, again, sort of gives a little bit of a Kelly vibe, but I just, I love the fact that it has a top handle and the crossbody strap, and it just looks so ladylike, like even more ladylike than a Kelly, for example. And it's $3,500. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that that's cheap, but for an all leather bag with that jewelry quality hardware, I think is amazing. I also really like the Serpenti Forever crossbody bag. So, you know, a little more casual. It doesn't have the top handle, but again, it's got that chain and leather combination crossbody strap. It's got, you know, some different compartments in it and just super easy to carry. Again, I think that's adorable. That comes in at $3,300. And then they've got some new styles out, which again, I think are phenomenal. So there is a brand new bag. I don't even think that it's in boutiques yet. It's the Serpentine Top Handle Bag. And so the handle itself, so it doesn't have like that serpent's head on the closure because this is more of like a, almost like a clutch style bag that has like that kind of like French, I think it's called, well, it's not like a French kiss lock or whatever, but it it's, it's different. It's sort of like the Fendi First type of opening. So it's like rigid on the top of the bag, but the ser serpent like body is the handle. It's very sculptural and it is just beautiful. And then they have the serpentine pouch bag, which comes in two different sizes. And I think that's been out for maybe six months or so. I'm not really sure how long, but it's it's been out for a little while. Like I said, it comes in two different sizes, absolutely gives me Fendi First vibes. Uh, very similar and it's got that like sort of same mechanism to attach the strap to and then you can fold them in. So if you wanna carry it just as a clutch, you don't see those and just, and again, the top of the bag where the opening is, is the serpent body. And just, I, I just, it's amazing. I, I think all of their bags, I have never seen them in person. And even without seeing them in person, I am incredibly fascinated by this bag and by this brand. I really need to get myself into the Bulgari Boutique and, you know, check out some jewelry and some handbags. So that's it, my friends. Those are the five brands that I am interested in buying from, that I haven't bought anything from before, and that really, really intrigue me. So what brands have you not bought from that interest you, that you, you know, might want to think about exploring in the next year or so. Definitely comment below and let me know what is, you know, what's piquing your interest. And I think that we will turn this into a tag. Since the five brands I will never buy from was a tag, let's turn this into a tag too. So I will put these down below, but let's tag Dale, a Dale's Addiction. I, this I would actually be fascinated to know. I would be fascinated to know what five brands Dale would be interested in buying from that she hasn't. Uh, we'll tag Meredith as well from Living Lux with Meredith. Now, Meredith obviously has a vast, vast collection, but there are definitely brands that she doesn't collect. So I'd be curious to know her standpoint. Let's tag Deb from Wild Unfiltered. Deb, let me know what five brands you are interested in. I will tag Amelia from Amelia Rose's Closet and Amber Ashley from Amber Ashley. <laughs> so those are the five people I'm going to tag in the five brands that you are interested in buying from. 
So thanks again for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help the algorithm. And again, if you haven't subscribed, I would just, it would mean the world to me if you did and help me get closer to that thousand subscriber count. I would just, like I said, be forever, ever grateful. And wherever you are, I hope you're having an amazing day or evening and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.